Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to be discussing different properties of special parallelograms. So when it comes to special parallelograms, really what we're talking about here includes squares, rectangles, and rhombuses. So again, as a reminder of what those each look like, a square looks like this, a rectangle looks like this, and a rhombus typically looks like this. Some people call a rhombus a diamond, but really we need to call it a rhombus. So let's go ahead and talk about how these are related to one another. So all of them are a type of parallelogram. Obviously they're a special type, but they're all a type of parallelogram. Now rhombuses are defined as having four congruent sides, while rectangles are defined as having four right angles. And a square is the perfect in-between of a rhombus and a rectangle. Say they bred and had another shape, this polygon would be a square because the square has both four congruent sides and four right angles. So because it has both, it's both types of those. But all three of these are types of parallelograms. Now it's important to note that a rectangle can never be a rhombus and a rhombus can never be a rectangle. A square is the only one that can be, a square is a type of rectangle and rhombus, but a rhombus is not always gonna be a square. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some different properties of these. So very first, let's talk about the properties of rectangles. So rectangles, as we know, look like this, and they have some pretty cool properties. First of all, they have four right angles. That is actually how we define whether or not a quadrilateral is a rectangle, is it has four right angles. Because it's a parallelogram, we also know that the opposite sides are congruent. And we have actually learned that the diagonals are congruent as well. So those are the same. Additionally, because they're the same, they bisect each other. So that actually means that this piece is the same as this piece. And this one is the same as that one. So that's pretty cool. Those are rectangles in a nutshell. Now let's move on to talk about rhombuses, which are a little bit different. So here is a poorly drawn picture of a rhombus. Now the hard thing about drawing rhombuses is if we aren't careful, we're gonna end up drawing a kite. And a kite is something that we will talk about in one of the future videos. We'll kind of go with this one. So a property of a rhombus is that all four sides are congruent. So that's really important. And because all four sides are congruent and because it's a parallelogram, that means that the opposite angles are actually congruent to one another. Now, because these sides are all the same and the opposite angles are congruent, what that does is it actually creates a really special property that says that our diagonals actually are perpendicular to one another. They also bisect each other, which means that this piece is the same as this one and this piece is the same as this one. Lastly, what it does, which is almost the coolest thing, is the opposite angles are actually bisected by their diagonals. So what that means is that this and this are the same and this and this are the same. Similarly, these two angles are the same and these two angles are the same. So not only are the opposite angles the same, but the diagonals actually bisect both of those angles as well, which is super cool. Now, the last type of special parallelogram we're going to talk about is a square. Now, a square is a combination of both of those beautiful parallelograms. So what that means is all four sides are congruent. It also means that it has four right angles. So remember, if you're trying to prove that something's a square, we actually have to define it as both of those things. If we just prove that all four sides are congruent, it could be a rhombus. If we just prove that all four angles are 90 degrees, it could be a rectangle. It has to have both. Then the other things is our diagonals, because it's a type of rectangle, they bisect one another. They also bisect the angles. So that means that this is the same as this, this is the same as this, this is the same as this, and this is the same as this. So they bisect our angles, they bisect our sides. So these ones are all gonna be the same. Now notice how our diagonals are not the same length as our sides. Our diagonals are congruent. And lastly, our diagonals are actually perpendicular as well. So it's like the best of both worlds when it comes to a rectangle and a rhombus. So what we're gonna do in the remainder of this video is we're gonna go through and apply these properties to different questions that we might see. So let's take a start, a look here at this first one. For any rhombus, T, R, S, T, decide whether this statement is always or sometimes true. And we want to draw a diagram to help us. Okay, so I'm going to draw a rhombus here. I typically draw them sideways like this so that I can distinguish them between my squares. And we've got Q, R, S, and T. Okay, so Q, R, S, T, we need to decide whether or not this statement is true, that this angle is going to be the same as that one. Well, we know that with a rhombus, that the opposite angles are always congruent. So this is actually always gonna be the case. Now our other one, 
asks us if angle Q is going to be the same as angle R. And this is sometimes going to be the case. The only time that we will see those as being the same, in order for those to be the same, these have to be the same. And for all four angles to be the same, they have to be 90 degrees. So that means that we must have a square for a rhombus to have angle Q and angle R as being congruent to each other. Okay, let's take a look at this special quadrilateral. Now, we want to classify this one. So looking at the information that we know here, what can we decide? Well, to me, this screams rhombus. Why? Well, in addition to its elegant diamond shape, it also has four sides that are congruent. And that is how we define a rhombus, is it's a quadrilateral where all four sides are congruent. So that is what makes this a special type of parallelogram or quadrilateral. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. This is going to analyze some of our different shapes. So for so this first one says for any square, JKLM, so here's my square, JKLM, we want to know if it's always or sometimes true that this length, JK, is congruent to K, or is perpendicular to KL. And that is always going to be the case. The reason why is because the definition of perpendicular means they meet at a 90 degree angle and for it to be a square all the angles have to be 90 degrees so this will always happen okay let's take a look at this next one here for any rectangle that we label e f g h we want to know is that is it always true or sometimes true that this segment here f g is the same as the segment g h and that is sometimes going to be true now i know what you're thinking you're looking at our shape here and you're saying those are totally different lengths. How is that possible? But remember that a type of rectangle is a square. And if it's a square, then those sides have to be the same. So that does occasionally happen if the rectangle we're looking at is a square. Now, our last one here that we're going to look at on this page is we're going to ask ourselves a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides and four congruent angles. We want to sketch it and classify it. Well, here's a quadrilateral, four congruent sides. Four congruent angles means that all of these have to be 90 degrees because there are only four angles. So this makes it a square. Aren't squares like the coolest parallelograms and quadrilaterals ever? They are so awesome. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of more examples where we're just going to run through very quickly different characteristics of these. So we want to find the measures of the number of angles inside this rhombus. So the rhombus tells us these are actually all going to be equal. Remember that. And so because they're equal, we know special characteristics like these diagonals actually bisect each other. So that means four is the same as this angle and these two. We also know that 61 is the same as this angle, but we also know that A is the same as C. So that means that angle two equals the measure of angle two equals 61 degrees and the measure of angle three equals 61 degrees okay so those both equal 61 61 61 we also know that the measure of angle one equals 90 degrees because remember our perfect our diagonals intersect at a perpendicular angle and so if that's 90 degrees we know one is 90 degrees and this makes a cute little triangle here so if one is 90 degrees and three is 61 degrees we know that one plus three plus four should be 180 because of that triangle so if we have 90 degrees plus 61 degrees plus angle four equals 180 we can do some quick math here and we can determine that 180 minus our 90 minus our 61 is going to mean that the measure of angle 4 equals 29 degrees. And that's using that property that that creates a triangle. So that is kind of how we can find the measure of angles in a rhombus. Um, let's take a look at this next one here. In this case, we have a rectangle, QRST. Oh, we already have a picture, QRST, where QS, so this whole length equals 5x minus 31, and RT equals 2x plus 11. We want to figure out what the length of those diagonals are. Now, if we go back to our properties that we know about rectangles, we know that their diagonals are congruent. Congruent is another way of saying equal. So if our diagonals are equal, that means I can set these equal to each other. So 5x minus 31 equals 2x plus 11. Then we can actually use these to solve for our quadrilateral so I'm going to add 31 to both sides here and I'm going to subtract 2x so I get my x's by themselves and my constants on the other side and we end up getting 3x equals 42. We can divide both sides by 3 and we want to solve for x here 
and 42 divided by 3 is going to be 14. But we don't want to know what x is. We want to know what the length of those diagonals are. So I'm going to plug this 14 back into one of them. I'm going to plug it into this one because it seems a little bit easier. 2 times 14 plus 11. Well, 2 times 14 is 28 plus 11 equals 30. Nine. So the length of those diagonals is going to be 39 units. Okay, we are going to look at two last problems here just to help solidify these properties of, parallel, of special parallelograms before we go. So in this case, we are looking at a graph. So what I want to do is make a rough sketch of what this is going to look like and decide if it's a rectangle, a rhombus, a square, or all of the above. So let's take a look at what happens when we graph these. Okay, and this is going to be a rough graph. So a negative 2, negative 6, a 6, 8, that puts us like right here, a 4, 0, and a negative 4, negative 2. Okay, what do you guys think? Is it a rectangle? Is it a rhombus? Is it a square? What do we think? Well, it's kind of hard for me on this picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in a graph here just to clarify for ourselves what this is going to look like. But based on that picture, it kind of doesn't seem like it's any of them. Ooh, perfect. Let's drag in this xy axis and use this. Great. Okay. So now that we have an xy axis, this will help a ton. So let's go ahead and collapse that. So let's make our dots here again. Negative 2. Six. Oh, it helps if you graph it right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, zero. One, two, three, four. Negative four, negative two. One, two, three, four, negative two. And our last one is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So now that I'm looking at this one, this looks quite a bit better. I can tell a couple things here. This is not going to be a rectangle, and it's not going to be a square. Do you know how I know that it's not going to be one of those two? Because our angles are not 90 degrees. So that automatically cancels that out. So in this case, because it has to be one of those things, we can use elimination to show that this is a rhombus. We also can figure out what the side lengths are by either using the distance formula or a manipulated form of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I will let you do that in your own, on your own time, but that makes this a rhombus. Now, let's do one more that is very similar to this just to decide. So we are going to pull in another graph here for ourselves just so that we can keep it accurate. And oh, as we pull in our graph here, it kind of disappeared. There, maybe. Hopefully, there we go. Woo. Sorry, this technology. Okay, so as we put in that graph, what we're going to do is we have a negative 5, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. Fantastic. We have a 2, negative 1. We have a negative 3. 1, 2, 3, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. And then our last one here is a 0, 4. I don't know how I missed that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then we can connect these. Now for this one, we have a couple things that we can check. First, we want to see if these are actually 90 degree angles, even though they look like it. So remember, we can check by looking for that negative reciprocal slope. So this one has a slope of up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our rise over run is 2 fifths. To go from this one to this one, we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5 over 2. Perfect. So that makes this one a 90 degree angle. This one is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2 which means this is a 90 degree angle and this one is up to over five. So these are all 90 degree angles. So that means this is definitely a rectangle. Now, if we want to check to see whether or not this is a square, a great method to use that a lot of people like is they actually create a, Pythag or a triangle on the outside and use the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a length five, this is a length two. So that length is going to be two squared plus five squared, which equals four. And that whole quantity will be squared, right? So 4 plus 25 squared. Well, we want the square root of that is what we're going to do. So this actually ends up being the square root of 29. So this is square root 29. Because these ones are also that dimensions of 5, 2, 2, 
two five and two five. We know that all of those will be the square root of 29. So this is actually a square as well. So that is how we can kind of apply those different properties to our quadrilaterals and our parallelograms, but especially these special ones. They are so awesome. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But that is the properties of special parallelograms.